come on! We got magic in the night, baby! We got spirits in the house! We got the East Village! I was at Robert J. Bourne's house today! I saw Janine Garofalo on the street today! The angels are with us! The Easy Paradise Angels! Give it up! Give it up! East Village, New York City, Manhattan, come on! 23, Pride Festival, give it up! Give it up for Ben Shields back, back from his sojourn in Italy. He was on the Grand European Tour. Give it up for Ben Shields, reading death in Venice. And we can kill it. Yes, look at that Brad man. Throwing a little stank on it at the end. Give it up for Brad man, everybody. Come on now, yeah. Fantastic. All right, thank you everybody for coming out to Easy Paradise Open Mic Monday here at the KGB Red Room in the heart of the Empire, New York City, baby. Yeah. Yeah. We got great artists, we got great poets, we got great perform. We have Sparrow. Sparrow is in the house, everybody. Legend. We have free paintings. We have Bradman in the house. Yes. We have Megan Krantz. Okay. So I have. Uh, I have uh, uh, advanced review copies of my new chapbook, tentatively entitled Secession, because it's about wealth inequality and the widening income gap. So that's going to release next Monday, everybody. You have to come back Monday, July 3rd for our blowout, my book release party, and you know, yeah, and, and 4th of July and all. All that kind of stuff. I'll be reading for my book one year. Stay tuned for that. That'll happen later tonight. Uh, one thing we, I've been doing recently, we've been passing a notebook around at the open mic to get the creative energy going. We all write a poem together. So we're going to be passing that around. You, it's an exquisite corpse. You add your two cents. You add your voice. It's about your voice. It's about getting you active and sharing your genius, and developing your genius, and your inner potential, unleashing the power within. Thank you. Thank you for those precious, uh, this is not staple. I published this at Columbia University, everybody. I don't go to school there. I work for Columbia Business School. I'm an AV person. I'm the Goodwill Hunting of Morningside Heights. And I, I used their equipment to publish my chapbook. So this is, uh, yeah. This is, this is courtesy Columbia University Press. This is a major university press putting out my, my chat book. So these, I have advanced review copies. We're going to be writing a poem together, everybody. It's going to be magic. People are going to be making music. It's going to be incredible. Uh, you know what? I, I kind of... All right, I want to try and experiment right now. Can we try and experiment? Yeah. I don't know if it's going to work. Okay. Uh, this is very spontaneous. I wasn't planning on doing this, but this is something I want to do. I want to do like a hive where, where everyone is creative and performing at the same exact time. I want everyone in the room, and now you don't have to be loud, and you don't have to be ostentatious, but I just want everyone to kind of be creative. So I'm going to play the piano maybe and do a little kind of like spontaneous lyric, and if you have a guitar, maybe you can play guitar. Is this insane? I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> or you can read. Let's just try it for two seconds. Let's do it for two seconds with me, please. Humor me. Humor me, everybody. Can we kick number four on? Can we kick number four on? Number four. Number four. Free paintings. Come on, baby. Come on, everybody. Everybody. Woo, 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 woo. We're creating, we're creating, we're creating, we're spontaneously creating. Free, free, free. We in, out, we get it out. We in, in New York City, baby. I'm sleeping good tonight. I've got the bed for 100 Egyptian cotton. Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lopez. MTV. Is, are you reading? Is everyone reading? Is everybody doing something? Is everybody unleashing their fucking spirit and their creativity and their creative energy? We haven't been massacred by the school system. They haven't shut down our souls, baby. We're in New York. We're powerful. We don't need an MFA. 
This is the KPG MFA. Free paintings, you beautiful. Let's get a tattoo from free paintings, everybody. Okay, I think that's good. That's good, right? How was that? Was that good for you? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Now you're warmed up. Now the room is in tune, the walls love us, the vibrations, the old wood, and all the spirits of the East Village are here. I was, uh, I was thinking, I walked by Robert Maplethorpe's studio today, and Robert Maplethorpe's an incredible artist. I did not read Just Kids. That's not why I'm doing this. Okay, he's a great artist on his own right. I love how offensive he was to the right wing people trying to shut down the National Endowment of the Arts. I love that Robert Maplethorpe like, had pictures of people, Euro, Europhage, Europhages, which is urine consumption. I think that that's New York, okay? I'm sorry, it's East Village. So, uh, amazing. This show is dedicated to Robert Maplethorpe. He died of AIDS, tragically. Amazing photographer, amazing human being. I was also walking by Quentin Crisp's townhouse, Quentin Crisp, lived right around the corner. One of my heroes, Quentin Chris, all my heroes are gay. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, poetry, all the best artists. Yeah. I mean, yeah. poetry, I mean, all the, all of my favorite artists. And so, amazing Quentin Chris, one of my heroes. Somehow he got a career out of being famous for being lazy and doing absolutely nothing. And, and just talking on stage. And being witty. You know, he was like Oscar Wilde. He'd just go on these tours where he's like witty. And he, you know, or Fran Leibowitz, and so that's what that's what I would love for you. I want that for you. We're trying to help you here at Open Mic and make you a star. <laughs> All right. So this is for Quinn Crisp. This is for Robert Maplethorpe. How am I doing uh, on time? Man, let's just get started. All right. I'm gonna read a poem maybe later in a little while, and we're gonna write a poem, everybody, because it's Easy Paradise Summer School here tonight. And teacher, I'm wearing my fine Italian pinstripes that I got custom made in Milano. And uh, just for you, baby, this is the top of show business. This is it. So thank you. We're going to touch the sky tonight, everybody. I cannot wait. And let's give it up. Let's just get rolling, baby. We're going to have Andrew come up and do some rap for us. Give it up for Andrew. Happy Pride, everybody. Sander. Sander. Sir, I need to connect to the arms. So I get this. Thank you, mate. Oh, my phone's being jarred right now. I got the issues regular aux. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the iPhone. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling tonight? Y'all good? Yeah, that's a good joint. I'm Xander. Uh, I'm from the P. I'm from Philadelphia, born and raised. Philly! Yeah, Philly, stand up. You from Philly, stand up. East Coast, stand up. We in this bitch. Come on, let's go. Uh, Y'all ready to get low with me tonight? We're gonna get hype to a few yeah. rap songs. Uh, this first song is called Too Focus, and it's on all streaming platforms. I actually did the music video in, in New York, man. I did it around like Times Square and all that. So if you wanna check that out, uh, I can, you know, I can send you the link or just look it up on YouTube. But I'm gonna get my set, I'm gonna record my set. Uh, you can start the song. Can you can you turn it up more? Bump me. I want the whole fucking neighborhood to hear me. <laughs> I don't know if I can hear me. Can somebody record me? Does anybody mind like holding it? Thank you. You're a goat. All right. You can play. Hold on. Uh, how do I get back to uh, the YouTube? The YouTube guy. Uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like this budget shit. Yo, 
Make it more louder. My focus is shit is my passion. Feel like good. Y'all can hear me? Just I say get some swam out for Hey y'all, can you rewind the song or you rewind it? Alright. Hey dude. Hey man. I'll be in the back. Nice to Yep. Hey. Yeah, I stay driven, can't lose my focus, this shit is my passion Feel like I'm chosen, when shit starts it gets up Swear I'm not folding, got too many flows you No, I'm the coldest, got too many flows you No, I'm the coldest If you haven't been broken, then we ain't close I know my purpose, I won't lose hope Yeah, yeah, Zander, yeah, I stay driven Can't lose my focus, this shit is my passion Feel like I'm chosen, when shit starts it gets up Swear I'm not folding, got too many flows Flow you no on the coldest if you haven't been broke with me then we ain't close shit yeah, I know my purpose I won't lose hope all I do is drop hits and kill let me float hey y'all gonna get rich and take care of my folks yeah. I swam to heat I just work every beat I stay on my day once my bill with my team just wanna freestyle and smoke a few beats if these haters talking crazy I'ma go hands like Muhammad Ali let's keep it a beat Every track I drop is too damn clean I'ma keep this shit thorough, yeah, you know I'm a cheap Feeling like a pro, I do this flow and shit in my sleep Always stressed, always on up that bitch Yeah, that shit got me cooked, try to chill out and be humble But I feel like that bull ain't been on my shit I just keep making moves, got my foot on the gas speed Ain't up as cool Y'all stay driven, can't lose my focus, this shit is my passion Feel like I'm chosen when shit starts to get some Swear I'm not folding, got too many flows You know I'm the coldest, if you haven't been broke with me Then we ain't close, shit, yeah, I know my purpose I won't lose hope, all I do is drop hits and kill let me flow, ayy, hey, I'ma get rich And take care of my folks, shit, yeah, I'ma get rich with my crib And hold this shit down, some people doubting me I guess they don't see how much of a legend I am Nobody can match my style, don't don't know what kind is, I was born to be boss, damn true, never forget, I'ma hold this shit down, all my music too far, and you can't put it up, yeah, yeah. damn you can't put it up, boy, rolling a bus and eating out for you, making money with my fit, while we in the casino, like, on some real shit, I feel like Robert De Niro, like, yeah, I'm too cold, cold and dead, Sub-Zero, I've been killing the game, and I don't need no cheap. Y'all stay driven, can't lose my focus, this shit is my passion Feel like I'm chosen when shit starts to get up Swear I'm not folding, got too many flows You know I'm the coldest, if you haven't been broke with me Then we ain't close, yeah, I know my purpose I won't lose hope, all I do is drop this And can't let me flow, ayy, hey, I'ma get rich And take care of my folks, yeah That's your first song Hey, I appreciate you all Thank you so much, for real, thank you uh, yeah, if you like that, um, my uh, my artist name on all streaming platforms is Xander with the Z97. So Xander97 with the Z, look me up, tap in. My Instagram is Young Xander, spelled Y X N G Z A N D E R. You feel me? Uh, I came out to New York just to do a little open mic thing, get my name out there, uh, network with some people. So if you make music, you want to lock in and do a song. If you're talented, let's do something. Um, what happened? Can I do one more song? It's two minutes, huh? I just, it's, it's, I just, it's, I just want, I want to like the crowd of like you know singing with me and all that. It's cool. It's called Ben in My Bag. What? What is it? Yeah, right here. Can you rewind it? All right. So this next song. It's called Been In My Bag, so I want you guys to sing with me because that would be really fucking lit if you did. Um, so the, so I'll say, got too many styles, and you say, I've been in my bag. So, got too many styles, been in my bag. got too many styles, been in my bag. I've been in my bag. Got too many styles, been in my bag. got too many styles, alright, run that drum. Got too many styles. I've been in my bag, been in my bag, been dropping too far. Get on the beat and snap, ayy, hey, yeah. Huh, get on the beat and snap, yeah. Got too many styles. I've been in my bag, come on. Got dropping on fire. Get on the beat and snap, ayy, hey, yeah. And I promise tomorrow, I'm here today, I'm blessed, ayy, hey, yeah. I always trust me, huh. Most y'all switch up and cap, damn. Grateful for my fan, ayy. Hey. All the memories we had, got some fam I lost. Wish I was still on my side. Damn, this shit isn't easy. Tryna stay strong and I cry. At least 
I had memories, try to think about the good times Didn't feel like yesterday, we all outside Playing in hunt, and time only fly So carrying the world, we be out From the day to the night, had to go through We see the street lights, grew up in a struggle We a billion yeah, and shit made me stronger Told me to not give up, always shot Can't be stuck in the same place, I'm reaching new heights Hitting every track like a home run You just a bitch, you can't throw a strike yeah, I'ma go like Queen Latifah, I'm about to set it up Shit, I've been stepping on every damn song All this bullshit I've been through, still stay strong Bitch, the road was as cold, everyone walking along Right. Got too many styles Been in my bed Been dropping on fire Get on a beat and stay Ay, Yeah, and I promise tomorrow I'm here today, I'm blessed Ay, Yeah, I only trust me huh. Most of us wish I've been kept Ay, Grateful for my fan Ay, All the memories we had yeah, yeah, Trying to keep my spirit hot I've been through a lot, but you won't know my name As soon as I drop, make a track like a bed Treat the trap shit like a job This next performer we're super stoked about. Uh, can we get, uh, long, hasn't been in a long time, we're very excited to have him back, one of the great songwriters. Can we get Norman Salant up to perform for us, everybody? we got a lot of exciting acts. We have a lot of fun. Give it up for Norman Salant. but you generally don't like to follow a rap act with major sentence. It's like sweet. But that's what I gotta do. This is the song. It's got these chords in it. I gotta do these chords. I'll try to make them Woo. tough. Norman! So. Yeah! So this intro was specifically designed to make drummers crazy. Because they can never figure out where the one is. The end of the world. 
with the little boys pee. Then they race those rivers down the street where the little girls laugh, but they watch their feet on a gray day. At the end of the world, they all just keep on playing till the end of the world cause it's a long way to the end of the world Woo. listen I don't know where my life will end but I have great desires and you're my friend tell you all my fears would the faintest blush of love still find you here the hand of his little girl who gives her away he gives her away but he hopes one day she comes back to him bringing all the love and forgiveness he couldn't give at the end of the world But it's a long time coming To the end of the world And it's a great day At the end of the world Both of them waiting For the end of the world But it's a long Yeah. 
Yeah, there's access to it, so it's going to be automatically charged. Not the deal? No, it's going to be within the next couple of days. And she said, Give it up for Norman Saland, everybody. That beautiful meditation on the apocalypse and the Anthropocene and this moment we're living in, everybody. We've got an exciting act for you here tonight, Summer School Pride Edition. This next act actually went to high school with Norman Saland. In the Bronx, they go way back. Way back, he's a legend, he's a great poet, he's, give it up, give it up, we're so stoked to have him back, the one, the only, the legend, give it up for Sparrow, everybody, Sparrow, we have major celebrities like Sparrow come out and do our open mic, it's crazy, powerhouses, Um, this is actually the band I'm in, Truffles, and um, I think we might have time to do two songs. The first one I wrote yesterday, it's, uh, yeah. In the evening, I wrote it. Yeah, I don't know this song, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, this is how the this is how the band works, though. I didn't even know that Sparrow was gonna be here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get. Oh, I'm, well, is, yeah. this, is this plugged in? Okay. Okay. So this is called. I never made a pancake. I never made a pancake that was totally round. <laughs> it's like a country song. Kind of a country song. <laughs> I never made a pancake that was totally round. Some of them were speckled, some of them were brown. Some were burnt. And some of them weren't But I never made a pancake that was totally round Woo! Some of them were oblong, some were thick Some, if you ate them, you got sick Some were ragged, a few were jagged But I never made a pancake that was totally round Time for the slide flute solo. <laughs> this seems to be about a person. This is, this is, this is a sing-along. Yeah, you can sing along and your line is synagogue, synagogue. And it uh, it's, uh, seems to be about a guy or perhaps a non-guy who's stuck outside of a synagogue desperately wants to get in. <laughs> synagogue, synagogue, let me in. Synagogue, synagogue, synagogue. I'm full of sin. Synagogue, synagogue. I want to pray. Synagogue, synagogue. synagogue. Don't stand in the way. Synagogue, synagogue. Let me chant. Synagogue, synagogue. I'm the congregant. Synagogue, synagogue. I'm losing hope. 
synagogue, synagogue. I feel like converting to Catholicism and following the Pope. Synagogue. Let me in. Synagogue, synagogue. This is where we did begin. Synagogue, synagogue. I want to pray. This is it. Synagogue, synagogue. That was Truffle. That was Truffle. Truffle. Truffles will be on Instagram at some point. <laughs> Look for them on Instagram in the future. Truffles, everybody. Ocar and Sparrow. We are so lucky to have Truffles. I mean, you never know who's going to drop in here on an easy Paris Open Mic Monday. Give it up one more time. Synagogue, Synagogue. For Sparrow X Carter. You can follow you uh, any of these performers that you're interested in. You can follow them. I'm tagging people on the Easy Paradise Stories. If you want to follow Sparrow and Ocar, they are tagged in the Easy Paradise Stories. You can check them out. Follow them. Follow them. Follow Truffles in the future. Can we get? I believe it's Liza Lowen. Is this a? Is this a? This is like a Lisa Lowen. It's almost Lindsay Lowen. It's almost, but it's Lisa Lowen. Everybody, can we get Lisa Lowen up? Oh my God. Smashing my head against the wall trying to finish. Didn't realize how hard they were. Kind of wish I didn't start it. Um, that's okay. Um, sort of about this weird time I spent in Death Valley. Um, I don't know if anyone's had this experience where you're like getting slowly broken up with and everyone around you knows about it except you and then you're blindsided and everyone's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised? How? Uh, so sort of about that. Uh, it's called Chelsea. Woo! Chelsea said she'd never dated a drummer long enough to get any good at drums. When she left the city, she gave me half of her things. Even the thin mattress I slept on that night, she tried to send with me in the morning. The last time we left the desert, I didn't dump the sand from my boots for a month. I knew if I wore them again, I'd start walking backwards into the salt flats, suspended there like hammock teat. I kept the sand because I liked knowing how to find you. So when you don't come back, I pour it into the kitchen trash can. Like I'm not the type of woman who would wait so long for the drummer that she'd become the drums. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. All right, let's see. Uh, this next one's called Suspension Conspiracies and might actually answer a lot of questions about the dumping. Um, it's about going on a bumble date with me. <laughs> Here you go. Here's the experience. Uh, okay. On the first date, all I could talk about was the Waco massacre. Just blah, 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 ATF, Inferno, Messiahs. A burning building really floats before it collapses, you know? And I'm thinking, wow, real tinfoil hat shit. This is going great. By the second date, he's watched all these documentaries and read all these articles, and I'm thinking, wow, what is he talking about? Materiality is making things complicated. I've moved on to those crows that just hang suspended in midair, sort of held by the wind in place, everybody driving by them real slow. When we drive through the desert, we pull over to take pictures with the state sign, and the grill of the car is just full of butterflies, and the exhale of the car is overheating, makes it look like they're still flying. Huh. Got two more little short ones. This one's called Rabid. Lately, I have too many swords and not enough hands. I believe in rabidity, the weighing of teeth by the pound. I'm studying the habits of horses to know the time to put my nose to the earth, who to be an animal for, how to love reins that fermata against you. 
You hold in your mouth anything I pull from the dirt. I believe in rabidity, how the blood in the temples should pound, should beg a note to stay in the air, to drag the habit of your knees to the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, and this last one here um, takes place on Second Avenue, so I thought this was appropriate. Um, the title comes from a very poignant paper magazine uh, headline about a year ago, really, really poignant, important stuff. Um, the title is Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp make out fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp make out eat fried chicken. They are busy gala sharing on Second Avenue. I am on the sidewalk looking at the sky. They are stopping to wipe their mouths. It is greasy and it is raining. When they see me between bites of fried chicken, they think I am lonely and praying. They are licking the bones clean, saying no one is lonely saying, even prayer is first person plural, mm. saying, you're not dead yet, stop looking at the sky, make out, eat fried chicken. Yeah! yeah. Get up for Lisa Lowen, everybody. Yeah. That was fantastic. That is published online, I believe. I think that is available on Hobart. Is that correct? Yeah. Check out Lisa, fantastic. Are you, you're in from out of town or? Yeah, I'm from Houston. All right, thank you. We, we love, give it up, give it up. We love having visiting poets, visiting artists. Thank you for coming out, that was beautiful. Give it up one more time for Lisa Lowen, everybody. From Houston. All right, we're gonna keep it going. Can we get KT Her up? It's KT Her out there. Give it up for KT Her, I think it's gonna be some more literature for us. Once again, it's a two drink minimum. If you want to sign up for next week, you can sign up now. DM me. It's fine. Okay. Give it up for KT Her, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Wow. Um, thanks, everyone who's performed so far. Y'all are amazing. Thanks, Easy Paradise. Um, Lisa and I are from Houston. We're in the city for a few days, and this is Brad. I'm gonna read a couple things tonight um, that are actually, uh, anyone know Mary Oliver? Who's like the yeah. opposite end of the, the queer spectrum from Robert Mablethorpe, maybe? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wild geese. Yeah, all right, I got some shit for ya. Um, this first one is just like a small reference, but this is called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yes. And this is written after I got norovirus at Disneyland. <laughs> I know I won't get into heaven. I laugh at all the wrong thoughts. I beat the dog inside me. All the long arms of the fog reach me in my sleep. This is my one wild and precious life, harassed by startles at my partner's canned alarm. I just want everyone to love me. I wake up and say it to the daft air, I just want everyone to love me. I think there's a word for that. Once I brought my mother a crisp leaf, red as joy, she told me not to toady. At Disneyland, drunk pigeons swivel red eyes. Someone is throwing up outside the teacups. A woman twists her child's arm so far it cracks. I don't understand manufactured merriment. I don't understand buckets of stuffed animal keychains. I don't want to get into heaven. This is my one wild and precious life. I watch porn on my phone with the lights out. I always clear my browser history. I beat the dog inside me. It was Pluto, wasn't it? <laughs> or Goofy, I always get them confused. One on all fours, mute. One strolling and guffawing. One throwing up on the parietal carpet. In The Little Mermaid, our car gets stuck. Ursula steals Ariel's voice over and over. It is her one wild and precious life. Someone is throwing up outside Splash Mountain. My partner's daughter turns into a pumpkin. I laugh at all the wrong dogs. Goofy's name was once Mr. Geef. <laughs> at first I read Mr. Grief. I think there's a word for that. The line for the coaster is two years long. The line for it's a small world is two years long. I beat the thoughts inside me. 
I'm throwing up onto Chip and Dale. I'm throwing up in the daft air. My partner's daughter turns me into a pumpkin. I get what I get, and I still throw a fed. I just want everyone to love me. This is the dog inside me. This is my one wild and precious grief. My fever dream is just endless lines. We all hold paper bags, waiting to throw up. Pluto was the smart one. He stayed on all fours, and so do I, romancing the porcelain. My shame scrubs the parietal carpet. My shame watches heaven throw up outside the teacups. I watch Pluto on my phone with the lights out. My fever dream is that everyone loves me. My fever dream is I'm beating what laughs at me. My family rides Mr. Toad without me. I know all the wrong dogs. This is my one wild and precious joy they'll never get inside me. This next poem is, who said wild geese? Somebody over here. <laughs> all right, so that poem gets trotted out, right? For all kinds of shit, wild shit, right? Yeah. All right, so this is called Wild Geese Palinode, and if you don't know what a palinode is, a palinode is a poem that like, takes something back. It's a retraction of something that somebody said before. Mm -hmm. So this is called Wild Geese Palinode. And for those of you who don't know this poem, it's the line that, that begins it is, you do not have to be good. Yes. You do not have to crawl through the desert panting, blah, 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 yada, 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 soft animal of the body, etc. <laughs> so this is my retraction of her, of her poem. God bless her, I love her, but. <laughs> All right, Wild Geese Palinode. But we do have to be good, Mary. At least a little good, right? If we're to have any hope at all. The desert, I heard, was once an ocean. And in California, an entire lake has come back from the dead. I wonder who would walk through water to resurrect a great auk, an aurochs, anything else we ate into extinction. I have made a banquet of repentance, but my soft stomach never fills. Meanwhile, the world catches on fire. Meanwhile, the sun and the petulant smog are moving over frack water, nuclear substations, reticulated roadways, our panoply of hostile architecture with its spiked balustrades, its grim scouring of rest. Meanwhile, despair's meager provender ossifies our appetites. No matter who I become, imagination widows itself against my loneliness. I've had enough of despair, Mary. I love what I love, even as it kills me. I see you're harsh and exciting, and I raise you one goose with its beak choked to shut by a soda yolk. When will we stop smothering with the greedy animals of our bodies this entire family of things? Thank you. Wow. Give it up for Katie Her, everybody. RP, RP. Real poetry, real poetry. The news from Texas, thank you for coming out. Give it up one more time for KT Her and Lisa Lowen from Houston. We love it, beautiful, fantastic poetry. Is that available, published online or anything? Not yet! All right, publish it. Email Poetry Magazine, tell them to publish it. I'm gonna talk to them. I will have a firm work with Don Cher, okay? He will be he hearing from me in the morning. And when I was in Columbia yesterday publishing my contraband chat book, they have the Mary Oliver quote on the door of the student, the grad student like workshop, the soft animal of your body. It's everywhere. Give it up one more time for Katie Her, everybody. Uh, we've got a lot of amazing acts. Do we have Sky Gabrielle in the house? Sky Gabrielle, are you out there? Everybody, give it up for big round of applause. We're very excited to have this artist here at Easy Paradise. Give it up for Sky Gabrielle, everybody.
Like Seeger Ross, that like a good, Sati. Right? You're fucking awesome. Yeah. Give it up one more time for Sky Gabrielle, everybody. <laughs> That's better. That's more Thank intimate too. for everybody. It's a little more cabaret here. We're doing the cabaret. We've got the Brechtian kind of uh, interloper. All right, we've got Ann Wood on double deck. We've got. 
Like Richard Dean in the on deck. Can we get Bryce Leong? Bryce Leong is gonna come up, and I believe they're gonna read for us. Give it up for Bryce. Give it up for Bryce, everybody. We're super stoked. Thank you. It's good meeting you. Yeah, one of the cat, one of the cat, like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. So it's easy. I got it all. I was a little less. I got it all. <laughs> Oh, are you recording? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can turn it off. Yeah. I can ask someone to record. Okay. 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 Hi, my name is Bryce. Um, I'm going to read some poems. Give me that song. Give me that song. The road was flat, sturdy, and clear. It was no problem walking along it. One day each trace has disappeared. All is gone, now all is fear. Easy to walk onward when one knows what lies beneath. The trooping ball shall quickly end. Drawing a bleeding morning to heed. Time passes, ground fades, as the path dies with age, barely tangible, growing vague, crumbling bits spreading vast. Gracious, there is another road, each has his, her own, new homes unfold. Passerby lend a hand, naively jump back. On to land. Indulge in luxury, ease and play until again what lay beneath melts away. Dangle over a pit of consternation, stand alone and free yet without hesitation. I am pushed, kicked, pricked, sticked until I let go, falling into a bright blue sky where I must fight to fly.
days ago. It should have been 30 years ago. So I'm glad to be here really now, especially the KGB, which is an amazing bar, really, and has a great history, and so nice of Matt and everybody to do this, honestly. So, um, yeah, I am from Provincetown. Has anyone ever been there? Yeah. Yeah, it's the gayest place on earth. Yeah, it's gayer than the West Village. It's gayer than Disney World. It's so gay that when a woman got jumped by three guys, two held her down, the other fixed her makeup. It's, you know, it was hard. It's hard for me to be there for so long. Um, yeah. That's funny about this stuff, so. So, obviously, I'm straight. Yeah, is that obvious? Probably not, because I've been in Provincetown for so long. But I, I do blame my singleness on Provincetown. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm 52 years old and sneaking into New York City to try to get a writing job <laughs> when there's no strike on and I'm not a scab, so it's really not helping me out much, but it's really good to be here, so that's why I started writing jokes, actually, so we'll see. <laughs> so I have a few weird observations about coming to New York City. Not weird, you guys probably think it's normal. Why is it so hard to find the New York Times in New York City? <laughs> Honestly, when I first got here, I was like, 7-Eleven doesn't have it? I mean, it's really, it took me a long time. Um, is Jimmy Kimmel related to Helen and Martin Kimmel? These people that have their names all over <laughs> NYU, because, you know, how else does he have a TV show without being funny? I just don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, also, when I first got here, there was that whole smoke infested thing, which I wasn't paying attention to, because I wasn't paying attention to the news, because I just got here on a bus, and I was like, yay, New York City, I'm going to walk around Soho in the village, which ended up being 11 miles in orange air, and I was like, really, I thought the ozone would be so much better than Hollywood. And then I was like inhaling smoke, and I was like, okay, it's a good thing I smoke. I shouldn't be too worried about this. But anyway, the other thing about smoking is, how come none of the places that say like smoke shops have cigarettes? I mean, that's weird. It's the same thing with like the newspaper stands. They used to have newspapers and cigarettes and gum. Now it's like, I don't know. And also, okay, here we go. 
I've been spending a lot of time in Washington Square Park, this is my new bit that yeah. I just did this morning, which has rules. Did you know there are rules in Washington Square Park? It's, okay, all the rules. And clearly, it's really scary down there. It's shocking that there's rules. But um, the rules that are especially interest me are the dog park rules. Did you know about the dog park rules? They're so good. It's like, my favorite one is children must be seated at all times. <laughs> so that's basically no children, right? It's like some asshole way of being like, we're going to tell them. I like the language in that. We're going to be like, it's okay if children are here. If they just sit down, that's humanly possible. <laughs> and then the other rule is, did you know you can't go into a dog park unless you have a dog? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> so I'm wondering about that. So I'm thinking, what if I have a masochist boyfriend who thinks he's a dog? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, can we then go into the park? Will no one give us trouble? So I think that should be okay. So I kind of got him this amazing dog collar with spikes on it. He was looking really punk rock. And a kilt, a leather kilt, cause you know. So he, like, he's walking around on his hands and knees. And I have the best leash too, because it's one of those retractable ones. So you mostly like leave it loose and the dog's all happy. And then when it tries to go after something, you're like, Fuck you! <laughs> his back. And I know my boyfriend's spot would be really upset, but he, you know, <laughs> has a kiss, so it's fine. <laughs> he likes it. He likes to be like thrown back a little bit. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm here in New York. I'm so glad to see you be in this amazing bar. Thank you. I'm yeah. Aaron Wood. Woo! Give it up for Ann Wood, very funny stuff. Uh, it's pride, Rock, walk your boyfriend on a leash. Get a collar. It's sexy, all right. We've got Libby Tilson on double deck. We've got Megan Krantz on deck. Can I get Isabel Monk Cade to the stage? Are you out there? Yeah. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it up for Isabel Monk Cade, everybody. An incredible name. Thank you. Give it up, Rachel. Hi. Is this your show? Give it up, give it up. Give it up, everybody, for Isabel Monk Cade. We're, we're, we're publishing that serially in installments. Come back next week. Can we get Isabel Monk Cade to come back next week and maybe it'll read the rest? Yeah. So come back next week, hear the rest of that. We left you on a cliffhanger. Fantastic. Give it up one more time for Isabel Monk Cade and that topical. Magazine style writing and for trashing the New Yorker as well. We love that. <laughs> Anytime you can talk trash about the New Yorker. All right. So we've got Christian Cap Capadonna on double deck. We've got Peter Lisbon coming up. We've got Peter Carolini coming up. We've got Amelia coming up. We've got Sir Snow coming up. We've got a lot of great acts. We've got Libby Tilson on deck. Can I get the great, great Megan Krantz to the stage? Are you out there? Give it up for Megan Krantz, everybody. Great writer. We're super stoked to hear uh, the dispatch from Megan Kranz. Give it up. All right. So I tried to be funny last time, and that's not my forte. I'm going to go back to being dark and miserable. So here we go. Yeah. My momentum, Maureen. I only know how to live if I know that I will die. That there will be no rebirth, only genesis and spirals. That I will experience the surprise of being the abyss, the melting fat, the dust, the trembling blue, the shivering rose, a body hopelessly frayed with all the loose ends draining into the dark. I only know how to live if I know that you will die. That the dishwater will no longer reflect your image, and all habitable places will become uninhabitable and charred. Unapologetic, your body will distort as you inhale too deeply and become a canyon, or exhale too profoundly and explode like a balloon, withering and flailing against a flawed and false dawn. Thank you, sick blood, for the reminders of the blade that will cut us down. We will honor every impulse. We will honor our mothers. 
we can break the glass bottles with perfumes and dance with the mannequins at dawn. Our teeth may turn to sugar, but still we'll grin in splendid decay. We will never be finished, but like all th good things, we too will end. We are so honored to have Megan Krantz come out. Give it up, give it up. Great writer. We love hearing her work. Thank you again. All right. We've got Sir Hobby Dorr on double deck. We've got Kieran Murray coming up after that. We've got Christian Capadon on deck. Can I get Libby Tilson to the stage? Libby Tilson, do you exist? Are you real? Are you a figment of my imagination? Are you a bot? Man, that's enough with these bots, okay? I'm sick of these bots signing up, okay? We need to get rid of this trash, okay? Instagram Zuckerberg, you a cage match, brother! I'm challenging you to a cage match, brother! No, I'm just kidding. Alright, so, uh... Anyway, so Libby Tilson's not here. Uh, we got Kieran Murray on double deck. Sir Hobby Dar is on deck. Can I get Christian Capadonna on the stage? Give it up for Christian Capadonna, everybody. The magic is about to begin. So good to see you guys. I also want to keep it on the dark note. Yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you again for calling me because there's one piece in particular that I, I can't do when I'm back home. Yeah, right, right. So I, I wanted to do it here for you guys. But first, Florida? Yeah. Florida. So, but first, here. let me just try out the, a little, another translation I did of uh, an old poet named um, Maxime Delacroix. And before I submit it, I just want to hear it out loud. Is that cool? Yeah. I think it goes something like, um, The fault is mine, madam, and mine alone. Every time I lose my footing and this tongue's ensnared, isn't the wordsmith the servant of all multitude simply? Each time we try to serenade her up there, Every time this pride of mine presents them a crown of bloom I weave all by hand, I run the risk of losing my perfection in a moment and ending these humble overture a hopeful so sad. But if I court catastrophe with garland and seem to dismiss all wreck, I'll tell you why. It's cause their good love's enough of a counterpoise for me. I can ignore all disaster tonight. Yeah, like every pretender to the jewel, I risk great shame. But how else should I tell my love for them, you cowardly lames? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to do one on my own. If that's cool, it's just a little something. Woo. You got this little thing that works. Yeah. Does it work? <laughs> yeah, so I got my good man Michelle on the guitar here. This one's called uh, Icarus, uh, Prince of Two Bridges, based here in New York. And uh, it's a fiction, a kind of, so something, something like, yeah, it's on me. Yeah. So in uh, South Beach, Miami, where buildings were green, pink, white, and blue rode up. Poet with dreams of taking his stilo where buildings were brown, finding a mic in Harley, snatching the crown. Cause he said, Real with no real, steel sharp and steel. Those poets there would know how I. Fed up with the buns, burnished bronze in the sand, and the idiot brokers in their muscly chargers. This kid, some called Icarus cause of his wing, soon flew the lube and found himself a room down Allen with the mammoth, two bridges of Manhattan in the backdrop. Yeah. So, uh, Blending in as best he could, this Icarus, uh, remiss to commit any uncoolness, uh, moved in his goose through his new city's miseries with this little bit of literary history and watched the way no parlay was exchanged, everyone in their own versatory. But at last he was home among his own, he was happy. Yeah, yeah. 
So a uh, home sweet home, so long neon thongs. Soon the new hues began to shoot and bloom on his stock as he honed the new thrills. For you know when Icky says for sure he will. So with the illest limbric since it was written, when improved his royal slickness, our Icarus prince of two bridges. So in a uh, ashen Manhattan where buildings were ugh, this uh, little prince Icky lived in the utmost of squalors with his uh, Barnard hag that had scoliosis in her back and could stand the world wide web much as he and wanted no little brats in her lap cause she was too busy reading masterpiece. Ah, for you. Yeah. Christian Capadonna, everybody! The romantic poetry, the love, the light, the genius, the lyricism just tumbles freely. Give it up all the way from Miami. We're so lucky to have him in town. He, he won't, you know, give, it, give it up for Christian Capadonna. Fantastic job. All right, we got Amelia on double deck. We got Kieran Murray on deck. Is Sir Hobby Dar in the house? Sir Hobby Dar, are you ready? All right, we're super excited to have this next act. She she was here last week, so smart, so funny. I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say. Give it up for Sir Hobby Dar, everybody. Hi everyone, thank you for coming out on a Monday night to yeah. support a hobby that requires an audience. <laughs> um, the reason it's important to point out that it's a hobby is because I come from a country where like some serial killers slip under the radar because people pursue jokes in criminal cases. And so like it's a concern that like people incite violence through jokes and in this country people can't figure out what to do when someone incites a Halloween parade to go to, you know, your legislative building. Um, so <laughs> I'm here because the hobby helps me um, deal with um, or sort of reckon with the idea of free speech that everyone's fought really hard for and um, ACLU's big long fight for neo-nazis to brandish hate has led to me seeking validation from you lovely strangers <laughs> today um you're beautiful and smart we love you wow that was more validation than i was expecting Thank you. uh and i didn't even i didn't even do the makeup routine i was supposed to because i decided to come here with my co-workers um, but speaking of validation and co-workers um, as you may have guessed from my accent, I'm new to the US and I'm new to American work culture. Um, and while I love, as opposed to where I come from, which you can all keep guessing and you all know, um, is I love not being asked whether I'm married, what my parents' lifestyle diseases are, who I live with, when my last period was, etc. <laughs> Um, but I am a little confused about how often people thank each other here. Mm -hmm. It's like, thank you for hopping onto the call you scheduled. <laughs> thank you for showing up today as you were supposed to. <laughs> thank you for sending me that piece of work you were supposed to send 10 days ago and it's now in my inbox. <laughs> and this is real. I heard this very recently. Thank you for letting me help you. <laughs> so, the thing is, it's, it's all really nice, but it's a bit hard for me because um, my therapist explained to me how the problem with this system is that I seek micro-validation and the annual performance review that happens uh, happens after my work visa runs out. So, um, it doesn't really work for me. In India, when I was good, I knew I was good. But here, and when I was bad, there was a little passive aggression. But here, it doesn't really work. And so, like, 
the thank yous that are doled out like selfie sticks on Times Square doesn't really work for me. So I was like, okay, I'll seek validation wherever I can get it. And I mean wherever, but because my co-workers are here, that part of the is all eliminated. I was in a session with my psychiatrist and she was asking me um, how I was doing with quitting smoking. And I was like, it's been 10 weeks and I haven't smoked. And she was like, good for you. At eight weeks, I thought it was hard, and now you've reached 10 weeks. And I was like, micro-validation. So I'll seek it wherever I get it. Um, laugh, guys. Anyway. I feel like this is, I, I ha the occupational hazard in the situation is that I'm a lawyer. Um, and there is a bit of like, uh, parallel between lawyer and stand-up comedy, generally we bullshit in front of <laughs> judgy people uh, seeking to find love in the world. <laughs> but anyway, uh, coming back. Um, oh sorry, last went, because I was just describing work cultures. I appreciate that everyone like, re like goes through 2.75 speed videos post me to about Title VII in the US. In India, it was like, oh, we found another reason post me to not hire women. That's the part you were not supposed to laugh at, but because you didn't laugh at the rest, I'm going to continue. <laughs> um, um, yes, micro-validation, no problem. But the thing is that <laughs> um, it was very interesting to me how um, in the US when I got here, a lot of my, I walked into like my manager's room and he was like, I was trying to explain to him that like I'm a bit, okay, my time's coming down. So um, he was like, uh, I was like, I'm a bit depressed. He was like, depression happens to everyone. And I was like, that's not my experience because in India where I come from, um, my friends make up diseases like dystropia to take a mental day, health day off and her therapist eventually told her that like it's called it's not that people in India don't suffer from depression it's just that in America it's called depression in India it's called low blood pressure <laughs> um, but it's not just it's not just like the many antidepressants which like one of my colleagues at one point I, my antidepressants fell and I was in st and in a situation in India, I would like hide the medication, blah, blah, blah. Here it was like, oh, which one are you on? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know if they're talking about my skincare routine or my antidepressants, but anyway. Um, but pervasiveness of antidepressants is not the only problem with the US or the only solution, whatever. Depends how you see it. Um, it's also capitalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was in the heart of capitalism when I was in New York, not because of like the bull, the boardroom feminism of the crying girl or whatever, and not because my milk could cost 80 cents or eight dollars, depending on which intersection I was on. Um, speaking of intersection, quick digression. Has anyone noticed how like really cheap stores have really shit, uh, sorry, really cheap stores have really good lighting? And like it's like really bright and you can see the discounts, but like really fancy stores have like low voltage where you can congratulate them for their environmentalism and then not notice their prices. Um, anyway, coming back, capitalism. I realized I was in the heart of capitalism when I had COVID, mid-pandemic. I'm not sure if you can say mid because post-pandemic seems a bit overconfident. Um, so, um, mid-pandemic, three weeks ago, I had COVID and I was like, in the three hours that the medication kicked in, I was like, I need to be productive. And I was like, shit, the capitalism had caught on. And I had two options. One of them was to suck it up and be part of the system. And the other was to talk about it at a bar that capitalizes on communist era ethics. That's my time. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mercer Hobby Door, everybody. We love it. Just, you know, comedians, just because people aren't laughing doesn't mean it's not good. I think that's, we want people thinking. That's what we want. That's the sound of thinking, okay? The bar, can, the bar doesn't want that because they got to keep you laughing to get that unarmed response, to keep you buying liquor. But there was a lot of truth in that. Give it up for Sir Hobby Dar. Blowing the lead on the antidepressants. Epidemic in this country. All right, we've got Peter Carolini on double deck. Yes, we've got Amelia on deck. Can we get Kieran Murray up? Get Kieran Murray up. If you guys want to come in, sit. There's room. There's chairs over here. Come on down. How y'all doing? My name's Kieran. I'm from Australia, but I live here now. We're just gonna get the uh, guitar sorted out, so just uh, talk amongst yourselves. You guys wanna hear a joke? Yeah! Why did the mushroom Go to the party. Because he's a fun guy. Because he's a fun guy. But why did he leave? Because there wasn't mushroom. <laughs> Is this uh... a yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> kind of tricky. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. Sounds good. I'm gonna play a couple of songs for you guys. This one's called Cake and Eggs. Well, heaven's a bitch, just you and me, laying in a bed of sand, with the blanket and a cooler and a 12 inch ruler, try to get you, see if you can. Life is a party, you can cry if you want to, but you're the only invite to. Sometimes it's cake, sometimes it's egg, you're the only thing I eat. You can count on me. If you're in a jail and you need a hand, I'm free. When you're in jail and you can't make bail, I got the money. <laughs> People go, and nothing ever stays the same. But the only thing that will never change is that you're always on my brain. This old house will look up all down, and the town get bought out now. I wouldn't care if I hate you, dear. We do a love in some places. You can count on me. Woo! If you're in a jam and you need a hand, I'm free. When you're in jail and you can't make bail, got the money. Float my side, mow the lawn, and a little thing you want. But do it in an instant, for gravy and biscuits, a baby for that I've been known. You can count on me If you're in a jam and you need a hand, I'm free When you're in jam and you can't make bail, I got the money Woo! Yeah! Gypsy Jazz. Yeah. So I first heard this song when I was backpacking around 
America and I was in Nashville, Tennessee. And I went to a potluck and I met this guy called John Davey and he played this song. At the far end of the pond, just below the waterline, lies Greecher all this time. With a bone to pick and an axe to grind, so travelers beware. Do not linger there, lest you do not fear. The flounder in the water, he's, he's gonna find you, he's gonna get you, he's gonna hurt you back. He's gonna find you, he's gonna get you, and he's gonna hurt you back. He'll get you with his tentacles, he's producing chemicals, his skin secreting toxins, they'll lay this bone to waste. Though many souls have haunted him, explodes his projectiles and guns, before they get a shot at him, he sends them to the bottom, cause he's gonna find you, he's gonna get you. He's gonna hurt you bad. He's gonna find you. He's gonna get you. He's gonna hurt you bad. It's a and bossy, but in and bossy. Find me on Instagram at Kieran Knightley. <laughs> Sad and great, give it up for Kieran Murray. Yeah. Kieran Knightley. Sad and great. All right, we're gonna keep it going. We've got a lot of great acts. Ed is gonna come up in a little bit. He's got a very special surprise for the recent uh, events with the Titan. We'll, we'll, you'll see. If you guys want to come in, you can sit down here. We got some chairs in the back. If people want to come in. Thank you all for coming out. The show is just getting started. We got a lot of exciting acts, a lot of great stuff. We got Peter Glitzman on deck. We got Peter Carolini. I'm sorry, Peter Glitzman is on double deck. Peter Carolini is on deck. We got the Peters in the house, everybody. Can we give it up? One of the greatest writers at Easy Paradise. Give it up. This is a great poet. Can we get Amelia up? Amelia, are you out there? Great poet. I love Amelia's work. Give it up for Amelia, everybody. Hi. Um, like every month, I write a poem about the month. So here's yeah. my poem about June. Okay. June has never felt colder or less like the summer. Somewhere above 14th Street, the current thief of my heart is dressed in business casual and searching for something for dinner. The river runs and shimmers, and I jog alongside it, getting a little thinner, chasing away a sallow winter in the heart. Every Sunday of the clunky month starts with a ferry ride down south, past bridge and bridge and bridge, and oh, each one bears the type of rejection from his mouth, feeling a euphoria bubble up from the boat's eager wake to my unwaxed brow. My mother says you are half my father, which means you have an unruly eyebrow problem to worry about, which means you're a kingly woman predisposed to bouts of nervousness and gout. Which means you're the offspring of a Gemini and an Aries man, which means too many things to get into. Pass through the days alternating between the views and sensations of river runs and the scenes and sentiments of fairy rides. And I am the least abrasive of all woman kings. All I demand is to feel every good feeling at once, to see every good sight at the same time. I contain multitudes, I manifest, cruising the Brooklyn waterfront like one Walt Whitman. How much longer can I go on treading the buoyant ether of desire? I am so full of want that it erupts from my ears, painting the city in shades of buck. How many more metaphors can I make comparing colors in the blocks of Manhattan? Like a fool, I develop a shellfish allergy out of the blue and inflate tableside at Momofuku. At night, once I balloon back down, I lay my dignity on the ground, and standing on such a plush carpet, hit send on the text that says, you up? It's my rock star girlfriend summer, or it will be once the June rain gives way to better weather. 
We're talking floor-to-ceiling windows, copious amounts of cocaine, and weekends in the Hamptons, or we will be once he answers my you up text. I'm leaning into the walk of shame aesthetic, leaving last night's eyeliner on for days despite risking pink eye battles. I'll go conjunctivitis crazy by the end of the month and all things will fall into their natural order. The whole city is gay and rainbowed, as though vomited on by unicorns or trapped in one of my shaded metaphors. We've stumbled into a, human pastoral, a humid pastoral dotted by rats and promiscuous wildflowers. I suppose there is a summer lurking somewhere in our jagged June, but it seems to have stuck its tongue out at us and trotted away. Oh well, I'll try again in July. Thank you. Give it, give it up for Amelia, Mia Marion, everybody. A very topical summer piece. We love it. We love it. All right. Uh, is, is the poem going around? Is the notebook? Where is the poem? It's in the back. It's right, just back. out there. It's, it's, it's in the back, Matt. It's in the back. All right. Thank you, Peter Lisman. All right. So that's exciting. So the poem is alive, and it's coming into, it's being born. It's busy being born, everybody. All right. We've got some exciting, I give it up one more time for Amelia. Yeah. That was fantastic. We've got Joseph and the Severe Dudes on double deck. So we've got Peter Glissman on deck, the great Peter Glissman, the comedy style. He's a Peter Glissman. Can we get the amazing, fantastic Peter Carolini, groundbreaking, NFL in the table, everybody. Let's go, Peter! Yeah. 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 I felt pretty angry a few weeks ago. June 6th, I hopped on a bus at Canal and Vera to work in the early throes of the day. And when I arrived on set at Coney Island, I thought, the sky looks eerily lovely with its red morning sun choked by a haze. How atmospheric, figuratively and literally. So, I proceeded with my day. Thinking nothing else of that faint sun piercing through the veil of clouds, my mind only focused on copying the keys I lost the day before. Later, I crawled into bed triumphantly, did my crossword, listened to jazz, and slept. Tomorrow brought paid errands, perhaps some writing and reading, or a movie. Tomorrow brought horror. Horror! Wildfire smoke from Canada blanketing the sky in an orange, ghastly hue of apocalyptic palette, suffocating God knows how many. Those lightning bolts and raven black cloud clusters over the shore. I, I thought them innocuous of a tad foreboding, and still agape on my errand. The climate crisis will not obstruct the landlord vultures. Old and young stumble down Lexington, some with palpable dread, some excitedly curious, some warily uncaring. I belong to the first camp. And as I saw a peak of the future, my body shrunk into its own cavern. But as I entered the subway for the next errand, given a haven from God's wrath, I could focus. And in the dark of the subway tunnel, I heard a chorus speaking from the shadows, filled by vermin and the trot upon our view, our quarry. We could see up and out of the tunnel and penthouses and skyscraper conference crypts and Ibiza and Aspen, fists on factories, whips on slaves. And what did that chorus say? It is on this day in winter's light I do dole out the judgment thus To the armies who unleash their fire And bomb the people dry For interest purely capital Fuel planes that scorch the sky On behalf of ruined towns and lands And those without a name It is this day I do decree I sentence you to flame To the barons pumping gas and oil Forever in bloodstreams That flood their way to kill us all Ignoring pleas and screams On behalf of dying biospheres And those who swallow smoke it is this day I do decree, I sentence you to choke To those who wield a gun and badge, drunk on their funds and power Yet their response to same critiques is shoot you down and cower On behalf of all the poor and needy who tremble in your reins It is this day I do decree, I sentence you to chains To the officials brought cajoled or dumb that claim the cold is fine Yet swiftly move to higher ground when coastal lands decline on behalf of the indigenous who flee their island town It is this day I do decree I sentence you to drown Woo! To those who manufacture 
cheap in order to make billions, then shift the blame right to their slaves when landfills kill the trillions on behalf of sunny ocean life and workers you forsake. It is this day I do decree I sentence you to break to the killers with their laser scopes who think themselves so strong. They take the lives of nature's gifts and claim the hunter's song. On behalf of all the mighty game you view to be beneath, it is this day I do decree I sentence you to teeth. Lastly, to the ones who watch, you think they're far from home as they sigh and look away in blissful lives and charm. On behalf of all true victims whose world shall disappear, it is this day I do decree I sentence you to fear. These charges are a dream of mine where justice runs amok. And if you think my method's drastic, well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> the court is now dismissed. Yeah. Give it up for Peter Carolini, soldier! Fantastic. Man, that military cadence really worked amazing with the poetry. Give it up, give it up. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. That's right. That was like drumline. Give it up for, give it up for Peter Carolini! Love you, The cadence. Love you, man. We love having Peter Carolini on the show. He always does amazing stuff. Very innovative with the backing tracks. If anybody has backing tracks, send me backing tracks. It can really spice up the reading. Give it up, give it up for Peter Carolini. Military. Alright, we've got Renee Fuentes on double deck. We've got some severe dudes on deck. We've got some severe dudes in the house, everybody. They're on deck. Can we give it up? Alright, this next comedian. Doing a big show this Friday at Gotham Comedy Club. You, that's a Gotham? That's a big deal. That's a real place. That's fake. Give it up. All right. This is a real. The very funny Peter Glissman, everybody. Woo! Yeah. Give it up for KGB. Give it up for Easy Woo! Paradise. Give it up for Matt. First time in over 18 months, I'm going to be performing in a comedy club in New York City, Gotham Comedy Club, Friday night, 7 p.m. Thank you. Yeah. So, performing in an open mic and performing in a comedy club, it's the difference between telling your college buddies you were once in a bar fight and being in a bar fight. <laughs> performing in a comedy club is the difference between having sex and having sex with somebody. <laughs> I love being a performer, a comedian. I love the entertainment industry, but there's one thing I don't love. Don't you hate it when people in the entertainment industry do a farewell tour that lasts longer than their actual career? Woo! I'm thinking about Elton John, Billy Joel, Donald Trump. Wait, whoever thought the acronym MAGA was going to stand for my age is god awful? <laughs> See, I, I understand this. I'm, I'm, I'm over 60. I'm going to be 61 next month. Thanks. Yeah. You probably see the reality show about my sex life, Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> I date widows because I just can't avoid them. I dated this woman. Her and her late husband raised two daughters in a McMansion in Port Jefferson out in Suffolk County. We started dating. The first time I brought her to my apartment, I said, I'm sorry my place is so small. She said, that's okay, I'm used to a guy in a box. Oh, oh, shit. Guys, bear with me. My new girlfriend dumped me after five weeks. I'm still trying to like decompress, to trying to process. She's a photographer. I told her she kept overexposing the negatives. <laughs> Before that, I was dating a singer, but she dumped me for a multi-instrumentalist. All I could do was throw my hands up in the air and say, oh well, hope the sax was good. <laughs> I've been married twice. My first ex-wife and I, we were like a couple of Disney characters. We started out as Prince Charming and Snow White. We ended up as Grumpy and Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's worse? Thank you. 
You know what's worse than dating a woman with no soul? Dating a woman with no teeth. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Woo! So right, be right before Memorial Day, I booked my first ever commercial. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Inspector Beatty for a social media campaign for Morton Salt. Did you know that a saltwater pool is a pool with salt from Morton? <laughs> 750 bucks for eight hours out in East Hampton. Now I know that. See? I don't know how I went from being a failed actor to being a guy who gets paid but just doesn't earn a living. <laughs> Not entirely sure what that's about, but you know, that, that's basically the, uh, the extent of my acting career at this point. But I, I mean, it, it's been a struggle. I don't take direction well. I was at a commercial audition. This casting director says, can you be a little more Catholic? I forgave him. <laughs> Maybe I'm just overthinking this. I'm an engineer. Like, I have a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and a master's degree in systems engineering. So the Pentagon hired me to do counter counterintelligence, but they had a budget cut, so I got demoted to counterintelligence. But I couldn't handle the stress, so I took a job in intelligence. But now I I got smart. Now I work construction, which requires no intelligence at all. So I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I call it atheist prep. You guys know about Catholics? You touch yourself, you're going to hell. You touch little boys, you're going to Boston. Catholics are big on funerals. Now I'm going to get cremated. I like to think outside the box. You know how much Catholics like pain? They took the Bible and they added more chapters. <laughs> so this is the month of June, this is the month of Father's Day. My dad passed away in 2012, so I've had a lot of times every June where I think about how I could have reconciled different things with my dad. And it occurs to me, do you think Jesus ever had a chance to do that? Like, do you ever think Jesus, like, when he was dying on the cross, he had that thought cross his mind where he could have had that conversation with his dad where he would have said, Did you just have threatened to cut off my trust fund? <laughs> Manage the properties in Queens? Marry an Asian? Oh! <laughs> I have issues. <laughs> I have so many issues, my issues have issues. I have a great memory. So I have back issues. <laughs> I get sad. So I need tissues <laughs> for my issues. My ex-wife couldn't handle my issues. So she canceled her subscription. You guys have been great. I'm Pete Lisman. Thank you. Yeah. Give it up for Peter Glissman, everybody. A good Catholic boy. I'm Catholic, so I really, I can relate. It hits home. Great stuff. Catch him this Friday, July 1st, at Gotham Comedy Club. Headlining the very funny Peter Glissman, everybody. He's back in New York. He's playing the clubs. Check him out. Check him out. We love having Peter Glissman. All right, this next performer... These severe dudes. Okay, we have a gig this Saturday, actually. System Lord returns this Saturday with Joseph and the Severe Dudes. Also, we're co-headlining. If anybody wants to get on this show, get at me, because we're looking for more people. If you want to get on a show Saturday afternoon, I want Jason T. Cocker on the show. I want to book Jason T. Cocker on the show. So if you want to get on this show, I'm looking for talent, baby. We're booking 3 o'clock Saturday. Speaking of talent, give it up for Joseph and the Severe Dudes, everybody. Do we have a guitar? Does anybody have a guitar? Yeah, you can use mine. Okay. Right here. All right, thank you. No problem. It's a, it's a sound check.
Alright, we're gonna do a couple songs. We got a show at the local hostel, 6 30. Woo! Playing with Matt. Yeah! So, the song's on Spotify. It's called Hangouts. Your hung up. Take a ride on a lazy train and blow it away. And Simon Coward, well, it has no power. You can sing if you want to sing, and yeah, you set yourself free. Take a ride on an easy trip and blow it away. Snickers from a gas station. I'm gonna eat it like a meditation. Lift the caramel off my sticky teeth. Like a raccoon find a thief. Cause I don't get hang-ups. Get me hung up. I can say if I want to And set myself free. Sing if you wanna sing Thank you. 
Joseph and the severe, well, dude, I guess. But plural, you're such a bad dude. I mean, he's, mal, he's plural, dude. Matt! We're in the Matt Brotherhood. Give it up. <laughs> Fellow Matt, give it up. And he plays the accordion. Yeah! Amazing, it's amazing. Matthew Silver. Fantastic. So check us out some Saturday, July 1st. System Lord returns with Joseph and the Severe Dudes. And maybe you. DM me if you want to perform. It's going to be fun. It'll be, is everybody having a great summer vacation? Yeah. We're having a blast. We're having a great time. All right, we've got... We've got Ed on double deck with his special tribute. You'll, it's going to be really a special thing. We got Michelle Bell on, on deck. Ed is on double deck. Michelle Bell is on deck. Can we get the very funny Renee Fuentes up? Give it up for Renee Fuentes, everybody. Give it up for Renee Fuentes. Guys, what's going on? KGB, make some noise for your host, everybody. Doing a great job. His name's Joe. Very funny. Is it me or does like the host remind you of like the warden from Super Joe? Right? <laughs> we only are, there's only four of us who did acid and watched Cartoon Network. Alright, I gotcha. I uh, make some noise for your last uh, musicians playing the accordion. That was fucking awesome, right? I mostly appreciate the accordion because when I take my hat off, I look like a Spanish Weird Al Yankovic, right? I know what I look like, right? I, uh, I don't think I told I look like a creative character from Tony Hawk Pro Skater, right? It's weird, I never skateboarded when I was younger. I mean, at least I tried to. I just didn't have any friends to go to the skate park with. It was very lonely, so I downloaded this app to help me find friends for that purpose. It was called Grinder. <laughs> It was weird, I couldn't find anyone to go to the skate park with, but like everybody was trying to fuck me, right? It was... You beautiful! That's why! Thank you, I appreciate that. That's my groupie in the back, guys. Makes some noise right now. Yeah. That was weird. I, I met up with some guy from the app one day, and we were just trying to grind two different half pipes. It was weird, you know? I, uh... I, uh, you guys would never guess by looking at me, but I, I actually have a really good day job. You know, I, uh, I do finance sales, and like the biggest... Yeah, no. Alright, you had your time, lady. Alright, I wanna... <laughs> I do finance sales, and like the biggest asset to my job is that none of my clients know what I look like. Alright, because would any of you guys ever take financial advice from me? No. Absolutely not, but I'm like, I'm two jokes in, and you guys would each buy like an eighth of mushrooms for me. <laughs> and the lady in the back would fuck me. It was just, I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... Ah, uh, you guys are. Yeah, this is uh, this is a fun, this is a fun crowd here. I like you guys. I uh, doing comedy in the city is weird. Cause you never know what to say, right? There's always too many lines you don't want to cross, right? It's weird to talk about politics. I don't talk about politics. I don't have any good opinions, right? Like I get asked if I'm Democrat, if I'm Republican, if I'm left, if I'm right, and I'm just like, ah, I'm a mushroom right now. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know where I am. <laughs> Like, I imagine the war in the Ukraine's over because I haven't heard about it in a while. <laughs> right? Remember when that happened? Everyone was like, oh, this is World War III. And I don't know about you guys, I was just really happy about the white on white violence. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. I, uh, comedy's a very, comedy's a very humbling thing, right? Like, I did, uh, I love, I love doing comedy. Uh, like a month ago, uh, I did like this theater show upstate. It was like a thousand people there. I got paid to do a name on the matinee. It was really cool. 
you know, as a comedian, that was a really cool thing to experience. But then, like, the next day, you could do, like, a bar show, and there's, like, four people there, the sound doesn't work, and you gotta just find beauty in both of those things. You gotta appreciate both of those things, right? It's all about the journey, right? Right? You know, so I, I did this show last week, and it was called Allegedly, Allegedly the Comedy Show. And I thought, wow, that's really cool to do a comedy show that's named after R. Kelly's last album. <laughs> You guys heard that banger we dropped, right? Allegedly, he dropped a, for those who don't know, you're on, you're on Cultured Swans. Uh, he dropped a, uh, like an album from prison, it was called Allegedly, and I thought it was really cool that he, I thought it was really cool he approached the marketing for that album the same way O.J. Simpson approached that book he wrote. And if I did it, R. Kelly was just like, hey, I didn't fuck these kids, but if I did, it would have been to this music right here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fall is ages past, make some noise if you're a dad in here. Just alright, alright, whatever you identify as, that's cool. I, uh, I'm more of a mama's boy, I love my mom, you know, I, uh, make some noise if you hung out with your mom on Mother's Day. Alright, make some noise if you called your mom on Mother's Day. Alright, 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 make some noise if your mom's dead. All right, there's one, there's just the two of us? All right, for those who didn't woo, it'll happen. You know what I'm saying? Just give it some time, you know what I'm saying? We'll come back the same time next year, we'll see what's going on, right? That's right, my mom died about like 10 years ago, right? And uh, it's okay, it's gonna get funny, I think. I, uh, So I like to think that no matter how much time has passed since that happened, my mom's always with me through the good and the bad, right? Like she's always watching over me, like she always has my back. You know, whenever I have like a good show, a good set, a good night, I'm just like, thanks mom, you're always watching over me, you always have my back, right? You know, but whenever I have like a bad show, a bad set, a bad night, I'm just like, ah, you spiteful bitch. <laughs> I grew up uh, in a Hispanic household, the only boy, of the youngest boy, had a lot of women in my life, right? Like I had two older sisters, my mom, my grandma, my dad's mistress. Yeah. Lou's real laugh, I don't even know. Those are, I don't know if he's laughing ironically, he's just like, oh! No, I, uh... <laughs> No, I definitely, I'm, I, fuck with you. I, I appreciate you. I, I, I definitely affected my dating, right? Like, I like dating girls with ethnic backgrounds, cause I like giving them cute little ethnic nicknames. Uh, right? Like, I date a Spanish girl, she's my spicy Latina. I date a black girl, she's my ebony queen. I date white girls, they get mad at me. Cause I call them my little colonizers, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I, uh, dating's weird. I was dating this girl over the summer and uh, she introduced me to this thing called We Vibe. Anyone ever hear of this? We Vibe? No? Yes. Couple? Alright, it's one freak in the back. Alright. Um, for those who don't know, We Vibe is like a smart vibrator, right? It's like a vibrator that comes with an app. So, like, you and your partner could be in like two different places and you guys can use it. One of you has it inside of you and the other one controls it from the app. It's like a touchpad feature. I have one on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like using it with this girl one day and she was just like like oh my god like Renee like what are you doing to me right now and I'm just like you're on the touchpad I'm just like ah, I'm just drawing a bunch of swastikas you know <laughs> <laughs> she was just like oh my god that's so wrong but it feels so right you know <laughs> felt some pull a pullback from that joke I'm not gonna lie <laughs> if you guys weren't a fan of that joke Kanye West wrote it for me I don't know I uh all right, this is where I'm at lose you guys. I, uh, hmm. I'm like 27 years old, right? And I'm like at a point in my life where I'm just like, fuck the Bible, right? <laughs> All right, let's see where, uh, where we go with this. All right, it's my last one. I, I'm at a point in my life where I'm just like, fuck the Bible. And I, hear me out, I think you should be a good person, I think you should treat people well, I think you should always like, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. You should be, you should be a good person, that exists, right? But like, I don't think that we should base like modern laws off the Bible. And I don't think that's like a crazy thing to say, right? You know, I overheard this politician the other day, he goes, yo, we need to bring our kids out of drag shows and we need to bring them back to church. Now, 
I don't know about any of you guys, but I'd rather drag queen babysit my kid than like any member of the clergy, right? You know, because at least if I leave my, my kid with like a drag queen all day, by the end of the night when I pick them up, they're going to come back home knowing how to sew or something, right? But if I leave my kid at church all day when I pick them up, they're just going to come home a drag queen, right? <laughs> all right, guys, my name is Renee Fuentes. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Give it up for Renee Fuentes, everybody. Are you doing any comedy shows coming up? Yes, every Thursday, every fucking Thursday, I run a free comedy show uh, at the Roos Avenue B. This Thursday, I have Mark Norman coming by. Oh, Mark Norman, everybody. Wait, that's on Avenue B? Avenue B, the Roos. The Roos, everybody. Thursday, it's free? Yes, it's free. I will be there, okay? You want to see the Mr. Feeney impression? It'll it'll be for free on Friday, on Thursday. So come check it out uh, on Avenue B. Give it up one more time for Renee Fuentes. Hilarious. Okay, we got Mo Hillis on double deck. The great Mo Hillis. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, give it up. All right, we've got the sinister minister Ed Pankoff on deck. Stay tuned for that. It's gonna be incredible. Can we get Michelle Bell up, everybody? Give it up for Michelle Bell. With the rhyming name, it's poetry already. Oh, Ooh, hello. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Bell. Um, I'm a singer songwriter. I'm from Long Island. Um, and I'm also recently uh, a new development. I'm a medium as well, and so I like to go to bars like this and open mics, and I take requests from the spirits in the room. Woo! So what you are about to hear, I hope you enjoy. Um, this is like new, so I hope you guys like it, and uh, thank you for having me. Woo! Yeah. Ain't afraid. I remember the time you told. 
told me love was touching souls and surely you'll touch mine cause part of you pours out of me and there's lines from time to time I 
So let's try to keep it to one or two songs, if they're quick. All right, we've got, uh, Ashley is uh, publishing a zine. So uh, yeah, exactly, you can submit. Eileen Miles is gonna be in the zine, potentially, and uh, some amazing people. She has copies of her first zine as well, uh, for sale for $15, if anybody no, it's wants it. It's $5. It's $5, I'm just kidding. We've got Teresa G coming up. We've got Sir Snow coming up. We've got Alex Schmidt coming up. We've got Jason T. Cocker coming up. We got, so Sir Snow is on double deck, Mo Hillis is on deck. I'm gonna pass this around, is the poem still out there? Let's keep the poem moving and circulating. Uh, if it's stopped anywhere, let's try to keep it moving. Uh, so I'm gonna pass this around, it's got the information about Ashley Zine, if people wanna submit to the zine. Give it up everybody, we've got a special, uh, special tribute. Can we get Ed Pankoff up? Give it up for Ed Pankoff. Yeah! Fucking asshole didn't even announce that I'm the sinister minister. <laughs> Al. Yeah, Al was right. So, like, uh, yeah, no, I mean, he did get it right that uh, there's a certain trend, you know, a certain event happening on the 15th of April, 1912, off the coast of Newfoundland. Can you guys guess what that I'm talking about? Titanic. Okay. Bubonic plague. <laughs> yes, Titanic. Uh, um. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry.
own tail, right? Uh, why is that? You know, well, not every man is capable of sucking his own balls. There's plenty of people in the world, I mean, we got like, like what, 8 billion people on the planet? I think at least a few thousand could suck their own balls and not be gay. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but, uh, um, like, like, like you, you can, you, you can. There's a lot of things in this world you can do, you guys. And guys, I, that's not a gender term. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, fuck, I, what's, what's a better term, Matt? Like, like, better than guys? No. People? Do you even want to identify as human? You people! Like, you fucks! <laughs> uh, you fucks! I like that. All you fucks! Yeah, well, you fucks. Yes! Namaste, motherfucker. <laughs> Give it up for the sinister minister in that touching tribute. Really beautiful, really beautiful. Ed Pankoff, everybody. Yeah! Check out his, uh, he's got a major media production company about to launch. So get ready for that. It's going to just be global. It's going to be an international conglomerate. All right, we've got some amazing, amazing acts to go. We've got Teresa G on double deck. We've got Alex Schmidt on triple deck. We've got Sir Snow on deck. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat. A great, great musician. This next act plays with a lot of integrity. Listen closely, really beautiful stuff. Can we get, he hosts a dime show uh, last Tuesday of every month. Yep. So check that out. I'll be out in August. That's right. right. That's right. Yes. Sister Lord will be there, but also playing tons of gigs around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, next, gig, uh, next gig in Manhattan is on July 13th. Mid July 13th? Midtown, Midtown at the Stitch Bar. Oh, I love Stitch Bar. That's really, that's a legit. Thursday the 13th. All right, see Mo Hillis at Stitch Bar, July 13th. Give it up for Mo Hillis, everybody. Let's get a warm welcome for Mo Hillis.
when the Titanic crashed, it was the most popular subject of songs at the time, like the whole year. Like, so there's, there's dozens of Titanic songs. So that's a pretty one, but I don't know how to play it. Just, you know, yeah. All right. Uh, so are we good with that? Sounds good, man. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay. Yeah. I think it. Yeah. Stoke song, it's called It Won't Be Long Now. This one I'm working uh, quite hard on. Um, I'm sure I'll mess it up, but uh, it's, it's pretty new, so here we go. It's a pretty, it's a pretty tune. Now. Shining warm. I looked at the sun and the sun was shining warm. 
He never missed a good friend till they left town and gone. Yeah! everybody. God damn, that sounded good. I mean, you gotta listen closely because it's all there. All the finger picking, all the notes. Give it up one more time. Sound great. July 13th at Stitch Bar, a legit blues bar in Midtown. That's fantastic. In Midtown, everybody. We love Mo Hillis. Thank you for coming out. Wonderful. All right, so we've got Free paintings on triple deck, baby! We love free paintings! We got Al, yeah, we love you. We got Alex Schmidt on double deck. We got Teresa G on deck. Can I get Sir Snow up? Is Sir Snow in the house? We love Sir Snow. Give it up for Sir Snow, everybody. So, thank you all for hanging out. Y'all the real ones, honestly. Everyone who left is like, fake. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the art, but I guess they left after they said, right? Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, uh, I'm gonna do a couple songs and I release, because that's just the fun part about it. Um, the first one is called Heavenly, second one's called uh, Saving You. I'm just gonna combine them into it. Uh, I like to come here because this piano is nicer than the one I have at home. Right? So that's really the real reason, honestly. So I just come here to practice and play this. But Woo! hope you all um, enjoy it and thank you all for listening. Thank you. Hey, hey. 
I love it. Give it up for Sir Snow one more time, everybody. Hey, that was sweet. Two drink minimum. We got we got Ben Shields coming up in a little while. Get ready. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait to see what Ben Shields has been working on. He's been away, but uh, in the meantime, we've got free paintings on deck. We've got Alex or uh, free painting is on double deck. We've got Alex Schmidt on deck. Can we get? Teresa Gel, so many up, everybody. A great poet. We're super excited to have her back. Give it up for Teresa. <laughs> Gonna bring the truth. Hey, I'm 
Teresa Gelsamini. Um, Woo! I was gone for a, a couple weeks. Um, I was recently in, on the West Coast. I did a road trip with some of my friends. Um, Woo! We went from LA up to Washington State, and I actually saw Joni Mitchell. Yeah! So it was this like crazy trip with my friends, and I, I love Joni Mitchell. Um, so this first poem is like a journal entry, but it was at the end of the trip. And I referenced Joni Mitchell a couple times, so but I'll use quotes when I'm quoting her. Um, <laughs> Tuesday, June 13th, 2023, close to 3 a.m. And sometimes all you have is yourself. It's the end of the road, and maybe that's the moment when I want someone the most. Parted goodbyes, but so happy to go, so glad to be on my own. Jenny was right, and I want to be right. I'm so scared, I'm craving to be on the road tomorrow, but I'll just be in the sky. Heading to Denver, straight into you, the passenger side. How can I sit there when I aged 20 years and didn't raise my voice once? Can I say the same for us? Give me trees that make me feel loved and parking lots that frighten me. Give me the silence and doubts and the reflection of different hurt, wandered out souls. I can't say I'm satisfied with the night, the other nights, the concerts, yes, even Joni couldn't quell the aching of my heart and give me redemption. I am a lonely painter, I live in a box of paints. Give me sunshine and I'll wonder if clouds are what really make me feel good. It's the same thing, always the same thing. I'm coked out again and again without a goodbyes. So what do I write about now? The horrid night, the boys we passed, fighting on the side of the highway, chasing after each other in a fight or some dance. I was scared, and I wonder if their bodies could jump into wolves as they ditched their cars and followed us hauntingly into the night. We escaped a kind of twisted reality, and I saw the moon hide behind the mountains that seemed to orchestrate it all. She pierced out as we darted past. We were safe and running from our own reflection. I didn't feel safe till the sun came out, but it's only an hour, so I stayed up hoping to wash away the twisting breeze, that dark room. You aren't supposed to see trauma so deep and ocean so huge. It'll rupture too many mountains to simply drive through. So turn on the car, leave the lot. Remember that it's past 3 a.m. and the sun will be out soon. Thank you. Uh, so this other poem is about summer. Um, last time I was here, I wrote about how um, I've lived in New York for like a year and a half, so I'm experiencing a lot of my second seasons, like second winter, second spring, and now I'm in a second summer. And how it feels like the same, but different. It's like new, but it's every, like it's again, you know? Yeah! So that's what this is. Beautiful. <laughs> And it's called Ravenous. Quiet nights, mornings too. Doing the dishes and sweeping. It's summer again. I thought I'd only have one. It's shocking. It's summer again. I've always had a hard time with seasons. I told my ex-boyfriend back when I was 19 that for me, I forget winter. The feeling or the knowledge. I don't know snow when she's not outside. I forget what it's like to be cold. I told him this as a plea scared to lose him, trying to convey the pit that was surely there, anxious to go, not wanting to say goodbye or lose the sensations of now. Yet it's summer again, and I'm changing like the seasons. I'm hungry again, and not scared of what's going, but the potential of what's coming. I'm letting time roll over me. The third can be the first, maybe this is the ninth, and fourth could be last. All I know for sure is, I'm wanting again. And again, it's summer. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Give it up for Teresa Josephini, everybody. That was wonderful. You saw Joni Mitchell. That's crazy. Oh.
that thank you for bringing that energy into this space. We got Joni Mitchell energy here. She was there. She saw her. And that diary piece was beautiful. Thank you, wonderful. Thank you for bringing your travels and bringing that whole country into this room. Beautiful. Give it up one more time, <laughs> Teresa G. We're stoked to have her back. All right, we've got some amazing, amazing performers. We've got Robert Frank still coming up. We've got uh, any uh, uh, Brittany Ledesma is on d double deck. Jason T. Cocker is on. Double, tri double deck. Brittany is on triple deck. JC Tucker's on double deck. We got free paintings coming out. Can we get Alex Schmidt to the stage? Give it up for Alex Schmidt, everybody. Then free paintings next. Give it up for Alex Schmidt. Thank you, Emo Tony Maguire. <laughs> right. uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Alex Schmidt. Uh, yes, like from New Girl. After um, so I was at the Pride Parade um, the other day and like, I, I didn't know how long that thing went. Um, at the end of the day, I was so tired, I started to feel straight. <laughs> uh, um, uh, me and my buddies, like, we actually got there just in time to see the lesbian float, the U-Haul truck. <laughs> and um, th there, was a, there was a lot of beautiful women there. Um, I, I, I was actually a, a little nervous. Like, I'm not used to seeing so many uh, beautiful women, like, except from behind a computer screen. Like, um, um, but, um, I, yeah, I was trying to do this like from all the all from the top of my head. Um, I, um, I'm a, there was actually a straight pride parade going on like just on the other block. Uh, my friend was like, "Well, how are we gonna know which one's which? Like, how are we gonna know which one's which? Like, one's gonna one's gonna look a lot better." Like, it'd be a lot more fun. Like, now I'm straight, but like, I, you guys know how to party. One of the most fun times like I had was at a was at a gay bar in Philly. I'm still a little sore. <laughs> but um, I, I'm single. Like, hopefully that's a surprise to some of you. Like, the the only girl I have is my right hand, um, and sometimes she even leaves me for other dudes. Oh my. Now. <laughs> Um, now, I, 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 you might be like, be like, dude, this guy said he's straight, but like, he's making all these gay jokes. I, I, I just, I just care more about jokes than how my sexuality is per perceived. Like, now, um, you might not be able to tell, but like, based on my complexion, um, biracial. I, my, uh, my dad, my, my mom is white, and my dad was never around. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working on a, trying to fill that with a non-negative stereotype. So if you got something, let me know. <laughs> um, but um, the problem I face, like being biracial, is um, the biggest challenge is um, I just don't know whether I can say the N word or not. I just want to know, like, if I'm walking down the street, if I can say if I can say all of Little Wayne's lyrics or just half. All of Drake is fair game. <laughs> like. Um, half half is about right. Like, if you're biracial, our word is nay. Just don't say it with a hard G. Like, now, um, <laughs> any of you, any of you, uh, any of you ever do ecstasy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me neither. <laughs> so, uh, what, I really, I really like. I think ecstasy is like a great name. I think more drugs should be named after the feeling that's provoked, like when you take it. Like, for example, cocaine would be confidence. Xanax, relaxed. Alcohol. Also confidence, then lust, then anger, <laughs> <laughs> then depression. Right? <laughs> fentanyl, fentanyl would be death. <laughs> In bath salts, cannibalism. You remember that, Florida? I, but, um, I was uh, I was at the park recently, and there was a booth for the socialist revolution. Like, they were legit, too. They had Karl Marx, like, right on the front. Um, and I asked the girl, like, oh, well, what's going on, like, here? She said, like, they were an organization to end corporate greed and stop, like, pointless consumerism. I, I'm like, oh, can I get a flyer? Like, my communist buddies at KGB are going to love this. <laughs> and she said, oh, like, the flyer, the flyer will be $5. But, but you just said, like, I... 
I thought you were trying to put power in the hands of the people. Like, I guess they haven't seized the means of flyer production. <laughs> Maybe instead of like power, they should focus on getting paper into the hands of people. Like, uh, so, um, I, uh, my doctor recently, uh, she asked like if I was sexually active. I said, uh, no, but my right hand is. <laughs> And I have one more before I leave. I <laughs> wish, wish this uh, sound went a little better. Um, so uh, it was sad to hear um, about um, kind of what happened, like kind of with the oceans, oceans uh, gate, like sub of it imploded underwater. Um, the 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 CEO is under a lot of pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right, all right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Very funny. That was very funny. Give it up for Alex Schmidt, everybody. I can't, you know, to be honest, I was trying to think of the name the other day. I can't believe they called it Ocean Gate because it's so close to Watergate. I mean, what? What did they think was going to happen? Jesus Christ! Anything with a gate, we know it's a crime. It's a conspiracy. It's an inside job. Ocean Gate was an inside job. All right. We're not going to shit on the dead people anymore. Poor, poor bastards. Deregulate space exploration. Deregulate billionaire exploration. I'm all for it. Let them do whatever the fuck they want. Let them incinerate themselves in outer space. I love it. The more billionaires that die exploring. I'm just, you know, kidding. Uh, sort of. But anyway, speaking of freedom and anarchy and fucking American... Just genius! Free paintings! Alright, we've got Brittany Ledesma on double deck. We've got Jason T. Cocker on deck. Give it up for free paintings! Whoops, <laughs> sorry. Free awesome. paintings, last great American band. This one's called Know Your Worth, very relatable. I'll put you up to I'll put you up to Like, like, Yeah. 
Free paintings, last great American band. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, KGB Bar. Two drinks and Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Free paintings, American band. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much. Yes! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Check out free paintings! That sounded like my bloody Valentine. That sounded exactly like my bloody Valentine to me. Give it up for free painting! Woo! Oh, that was great. All right, we've got a comedy triple. Jason King is in the house, everybody. What up, what up? Bam, yes, perfect. Jason King is in the house, everybody. We've got a comedy triple play coming at you in this late night block. It's late night, everybody. So get ready to laugh because it's time. All right, we've got Tarek on double deck. Been waiting patiently. We, we've got, well, we've got a number of great performers. I just want to do a little roll call. We've got Joe Swan coming up. We've got Mac Russ coming up. We've got Robert Frank coming up. We've got Ashley coming up. On double deck, we've got Tarek. On deck, we've got the great Brittany Ledesma. Get ready, Ledesbians. <laughs> and I can't, this next performer, we got some big things planned. We're going to start a comedy team. And uh, the sky's the limit. Give it up for the hilarious... Jason T. Cocker, everybody. Yeah. Guys, let's hear it for the great Matt Proctor once more. Oh. Uh, I, I didn't even want to perform tonight, actually. Uh, it's true. It's true. I lie, I lie a lot. I've been in a fucking funk. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to be part of the community fucking poem. Yeah. Which is fucking great. Oh, yeah. Is it? It's there it is. Oh, can I get uh, that? Get you, yeah. I thought you had to sign up for it, but you don't want to sign up for it. But I signed up for it. If I knew I didn't have to sign up for it, I'd still be drinking fucking whiskey on page 17 of my contribution to the community poem. Oh. God damn. Some good came out of it though. I was in the back earlier, way earlier. Yeah. And I tricked some other stand comedians into contributing to the community poem. Oh. I just, I handed it to him and told him it was a birthday card for Joe Rogan. <laughs> and they wrote some of the most beautiful poetry I've ever fucking seen. I was, uh, I am, like, I have like weird uh, performance anxiety, and I thought like uh, the community 
poem would be good for me, and it was for a moment until I handed it to the next person, and then immediately I was like, no, 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 give it back! <laughs> give it back, it's going to be perfect, I missed a word! Give it back to me. That's what I'm fucking doing. And I'm sad, I am actually sad I'm performing tonight, as you all are. <laughs> <laughs> Different reasons, but you know, we're all sad, that's important. And I'm sad because, like, I just found out about Matt's show set, and I'd love to do it, but like, I wish I didn't perform tonight so that you could honestly <laughs> announce me as coming to the stage in complete artistic crisis. You wouldn't have seen him anywhere in the last three weeks. Jason T. Cocker. That's, that, that's the energy you would have brought, too. You're Johnny Energy, but that's the best you would have done. Um, no, yeah, I've been, um, I've been, to, I've been performed in like, uh, in like two weeks. It's been, kind of, it's been weird, but I've been going to other shows, right? And that's been good. So we've been seeing other people. It's like inspiring, you know? And uh, my partner and I, we were going to see a show. We're on the train, heading downtown. And uh, a lady got on the train with her baby strapped to her back. And she was selling uh, candy bars to help support her and her baby. And it was like really touching, man. Super adorable baby, right? And it wasn't until that moment that I realized that's what I want for my partner. I want my partner to strap me to her back and carry me around while she sells candy bars to support the both of us. That's, that's, that's what I, that's really all I'm looking for in a relationship, you know. It's not, it's not what she's looking for in a relationship. Uh, you know, so, so I also found out that sometimes it does, it does, uh, it does hurt to ask. So, uh, so I was walking around after that, walk around the city alone. And I was hit with a wave, a wave of nostalgia for my younger days, growing up in the country. I don't know if you get, I, I'm a country boy. <laughs> I don't reject that anymore, but I am. And uh, you know, there's just some shit like from the country you don't get in the city. You know? I was thinking back, you've probably seen this type of, even if you grew up in the city, you probably see all this in like TV shows or movies or whatever. Uh, places like uh, Make Out Point or uh, Lover's Lane, right? <laughs> They're not all called that. We have our own names, you know? So where I grew up, we had a place called uh, Smoocher's Hovel. <laughs> and man, it was great. I mean, it was nothing to look at, right? It was just a shack. Owned by Earl Smoocher. <laughs> but it was great. You could just go in there and start jerking off or whatever. You know? And Earl didn't give a shit. He wanted, you know, he just wanted a friend. He wanted company. And he had enough problems already. He wasn't going to tell anyone. You imagine Earl going to the police saying a bunch of kids are jacking it in my sack track. <laughs> that's, that's no fucking help to that guy. That was great. It's hard to look back there. And you don't, you don't have anything like that in the city, you know? What do you guys do when you're walking down the street and you suddenly have to jack off? <laughs> right? You just you just go in an alley or on the street or a park or a library, anywhere. Sure, you can do it anywhere. But where's the romance in that, I ask? You know, that's why you really need a hovel. Or maybe, maybe it's just me. I'm just a I'm just a country boy. You know, I'd like to leave on a uh, on a positive note. But instead, I'm going to ask this. Did anyone, did anyone else have like a pretty good pandemic? Yeah. Woo! Right? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not. I can't lie. You know. Best time of my life. It was really good for me. I lost. I lost a lot of weight. Gained a lot of confidence. I lost a little bit of that here tonight. But don't worry, I'm gonna get it back. There's gonna be another pandemic soon. And you're all gonna be at home thinking, oh, we should have laughed more at Jason when he had the chance. And you'd be right. Not only because I was very, very funny, but also because I know people in government. And really could have made a difference. All right, I'm Jason Tinkoff, you've been great. Let's hear Woo! Yeah! Give it up for Jason T. Cocker, everybody. There's not that many people doing...
comedy on this level. Let me just tell you, okay? His video about the Flash movie was wait, fucking brilliant. Wait for my Oppenheimer stand. Oh my god, everybody. Subscribe! Subscribe, follow, do it all. Jason T. Cocker, everybody. Amazing comedy. I mean, just do it for the room, this guy. He's doing it for the room. I think maybe we'll see him on Saturday. I don't know. We kind of blew it. I guess we blew it. You know, that exclusive engagement. This was like a secret show, but now everybody's like, you know, spoiled the surprise. All right. We've got some amazing, amazing entertainment coming at you. We've got Ashley coming up. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be incredible. We've got... We got Jason King coming up. We've got Robert Frank coming up. We got amazing stuff. Tarek is on deck. Ladies and gentlemen, hardcore Ledesbians, get ready! It's Pride. Give it up for Brittany Ledesma, everybody. One of the best comics working. I love when he uses my niche thing and like y'all are like, who the fuck is this bitch? Um, that's cool. I, uh, yo, I'm just gonna talk. I have Woo! been bailed on by this British douchebag. Like, what a rubbish twat. Like, you know, like, I'm so sorry. I also hate accents. For the passion. British! I'm trying. God, if I could get in there. I don't... Like, oh my god. I'm like, what do I have to be like, give you a crumpet after you eat my twat? Like, I don't know. Ugh. That's a good lad. I am so high and my mind went in like 50 directions just now. But, god. I'm so annoyed. Because he's like a, a like, retired professional rugby player and he's hairless. I hate hairy men. That's why I like small, dainty women, too. You know, I like, when I fuck someone, I look, can we gossip after this, you know? That's what I look for. But he, he also looks permanently bloated, you know? Like, he's not fat, he's ripped, but permanently, like, he eats too much sodium type ripped. I don't know. That's fine. I, uh... I did celebrate Pride. I'm bisexual, you can tell because I talk about it a lot and only date men. <laughs> no, I do date women, which is why I hate being a stereotype, which is why I felt bad that I was also stressing over a guy on Pride. I was like, I'm really just really doing it, really just digging into the stereotype. I mean, I was so, because I tried so hard. Like, that's why I didn't do cocaine when I was a stripper, you know? Like, I didn't want to be what was expected. Okay. I don't know. I also, I'm not like other hot girls. I went to the special school. Uh, yeah, I was, I went to a dyslexic school growing up and uh, let me tell you, <laughs> it was what it was. I took theater there and theater at a dyslexic school is just improv. <laughs> Like, they had to at least have a talk about that, you know? They're like, we can't let these fucking idiots read scripts out loud. <laughs> God, and then force the parents to watch that. They're gonna stop sending their kids to, to school here, you know? Like, oh, like, force the parents to go watch a worse version of Romeo and Juliet, you know? Called Juliet and Romeo. They're not gonna correct those kids. <laughs> And then how annoying would that be for the theater teacher to be like, I really need y'all to read in between the lines. And the kids are like, we can't even read the lines. <laughs> I made a joke about being dyslexic the other day. It wasn't like funny, but it was like in conversation with my friend. You look so worried. Is that just your face? I'm just listening. You're like so good. Like you're beautiful. And oh, you're, like, thank you. I once had a woman come up after me on this mic and she was like, yeah, sorry I didn't get your joke, because I guess I was just too smart. I just think too much. I was like, bitch, I hope you get mugged. I don't give a fuck. I hate pretentious white bitches, okay? I'm Mexican, and when I tell people that, they say no. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. Sorry to not be asking you if you want to go get quesadillas, that's it. Like, what do you want from me? I don't... That's fine. Back to the dyslexic stuff. I'm really just rambling now. 
it wasn't worth the punchline. <sighs> what else? I've seen two public bidets since I moved to New York, and I'm just not liberal enough for that. Like, I'm liberal in Texas, but it, I'm very conservative when it comes to my asshole. Like, I'm like a straight white man from the South. I'm like, no one goes down there. Only God sees it. Like, no guy has ever seen my asshole. I make them peaky promise they're not going to look at it before they hit it from the back, you know? And I check, too. And they're like, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. So, I don't know. I, uh... I have a... I, I don't do cocaine, because, which is a shame, because I have these nostrils. <laughs> I get told that too. They're like, oh my god, what's the section on those key <laughs> that things? Like, have you tried cleaning your keyboard with them? <laughs> I, well, the thing is, I know I have a big nose. I grew up in the South, and this I'm going to try, and if it's awful, you know, it's going to die here. And then on YouTube when he posts it. And if y'all really hate me, please cancel me after. That will give me more publicity than anything. But I grew up in the South, I went to a private Christian school, and one year, and the dyslexic school, I, there was like 17 kids in my class, and it was me, a half Mexican, and then a tan kid from Germany as the diversity. <laughs> so all the other kids were just rich white twats, you know? And I got told often that I had an African nose growing up, which is racist. And for 20 cents a day, you too can help feed this hoe. <laughs> is that, how is, does it have legs or is it to, okay, I'm gonna take the lab and take it for what it is. Thank you, oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what do I wanna, I've been thinking about freezing my eggs. Um, so I can make huevos rancheros and feed them to my mother one day. Like, oh, you know, crazy. You keep telling me to have kids when you just ate them. Oh my God. <laughs> also, that's really kind. You know how expensive that would be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give it up for Brittany Ledesma, everybody. It's fantastic, very funny. All right, we've got some amazing stuff. We've got Joe the Swan on double deck. We've got Ashley on deck. Let's get, okay, so tomorrow night, uh, Tarek is hosting an event in this very room, the Gong Show. I love the Gong Show. I, I think this is going to be an amazing event, so check it out tomorrow night. Sign up. It'll be like this, except they'll gong you, I, I guess, if you're terrible. So that'll be fun. Give it up. Give it up. We're going to do some comedy. Give it up for Tarek, everybody. Tarek Blue.